Welcome to the Intimate Marriage Podcast, where I teach educated, successful couples how to have incredible, passionate relationships so that you can stop compromising and start feeling fully alive in your relationship. I'm Alexandra Stockwell, aka The Intimacy Doctor. I'm a physician, a relationship and intimacy coach, and I'm an intimate marriage expert. My husband and I have been married for 26 years. We have four children and full professional lives, and we've created an amazing marriage. I've shown hundreds of couples how to do so as well. So if you want to deepen your understanding of your own relationship and learn to access new heights of emotional, sensual, and erotic intimacy, you're in the right place. I will show you how. Now, let's dive in. The holidays are coming in the United States. Thanksgiving has just happened, and we're moving into December holidays. Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, sometimes Ramadan, whatever it is that you're celebrating in our society, we're all to some degree anticipating Christmas, the way it impacts what's happening in stores, the music in public spaces. This is the time when we're all supposed to be happy and have amazing, amazing experiences. It's a time for togetherness and really being with those you love. That's what it's supposed to be according to the cultural memes. In reality, it's often extremely different. The loneliness during the holiday season is is severe. And one of the things that really got my attention when I encountered this a number of years ago is that the greatest number of applications for divorce happen in the month of January as compared to every other month in the year. Honestly, before I encountered this statistic, it never occurred to me that divorce had a seasonal element but this is well known among divorce lawyers that their busiest season for getting new cases, new clients is in January. And when I heard this, it really got me thinking because that is just after the holidays. And I think there are multiple reasons why this is the case. For one, couples want to have one last holiday time together, have it be nice for the kids and the extended family. And then once that has happened, they proceed with the divorce filing for application in January. I also think that when we are less busy with work and all of the ways that we can distract ourselves from the realities of a painful, disconnected marriage, during the holidays, that's more apparent. There we are together, but not feeling very together. And that is another reason why people come to the decision to get divorced and take action in January. There's a lot more we could say about that, but really my interest on the Intimate Marriage Podcast is to give you tools to create a really wonderful, wonderful holiday season. In fact, the last few years, I've done a program, the Holiday Coaching Program for ambitious, busy, successful women to learn how to create really nourishing experiences for themselves and their loved ones. One of the other influences in creating this course for me, besides learning about these divorce statistics that I've already shared, is I had a friend, oh, years ago when my family lived north of Boston, I had a friend and her mother made the most 
incredible Christmas for the family. The family was Catholic and there were lots of children and she created the most magical experiences for her family. And come Christmas morning, she just fell asleep on the couch. So even though she had purchased and wrapped all kinds of spectacular gifts for each of the children and the nieces and nephews and cooked up a storm, she was so worn out from everything that she did, the way that she sacrificed herself and was a martyr to create something fabulous for everyone else, that the children just knew that come 8 a.m. Christmas morning, mom was asleep on the couch. And while there's something sweet in how these adult children talk about their childhood in this way with gratitude, I thought it actually points to one of the things that doesn't work about how so many people do the holidays. So between remembering my friend's mother and hearing the divorce statistics, I decided to really put my attention on what it takes to create a wonderful, successful, heartfelt holiday that you don't actually need to recover from and that is not inspiring anyone to think about divorce. That's a little extreme, but anyway. So I created a program and I've had people of multiple religions take it and every single one of them had one of the best holidays they'd ever had after going through this program and implementing the suggestions. Well, this year in 2022, I'm not actually running the program. And so instead in this podcast, I wanna give you an overview of what I teach so that you can listen to the podcast and implement things on your own. I promise you, if you put some attention on it, it will really enhance the experience and up-level the culture in your family when it comes to holidays. So the first thing is to get out paper and pen or just do it without writing it down, but spend some time considering your desires. What are the feelings that you want to have during the holiday? What are the activities that are going to create those feelings for you? I recommend you really take your time to do this for you individually. Then do it with your spouse, just the two of you. And then go ahead and do it with your children if they're old enough to participate, I suppose in each family, what constitutes old enough is going to depend. But when my children were three to 18 or 19, I definitely did this because children are going to have opinions. The point of this is that if you don't actually take the time to identify how you want to feel, And what are the things that are going to contribute to that feeling? You end up making assumptions or doing things just because you always have. Like maybe in your family, you always make lots and lots of cookies, but nobody actually enjoys it. Or it's just like another task that people are stuck with. Or maybe actually people love baking cookies. Just don't assume, get clear, get specific for yourself, you and your partner, and then you and the family, whether it's children or maybe in-laws, whoever else is going to be involved in the holidays with you. I really can't emphasize enough how important this is because so many people have holiday schedules which are overstuffed or materially oriented and in that you miss the magic, you miss the deepened emotional intimacy, the gloriousness. Actually, I'm sharing this having just celebrated my son's 24th birthday. He doesn't live at home anymore. In fact, he lives across the country, but he came home and I asked him, 
what would you like for your birthday? Meaning what kind of a gift would you want or what activities do you want to do? Do you want to all go bowling or should we go for a hike or like, what would you enjoy? And he said, actually, he just wants to connect and have meaningful conversation. And that's actually simpler to do just all staying home together and sitting in the living room. And that's what he wanted. So, And he wasn't really that interested in any kinds of gifts or stuff because he doesn't need much. He travels a lot. So he just doesn't want to be accumulating things. So hearing that, we've just had the most magnificent birthday celebration. Each of us made him a card sharing what we love about him and our wishes for him and reflections about him. That in itself created emotional connection to be expressing that and having him receive it. And then we spent the whole weekend around the dinner table, eating good food in the living room, sharing stories and playing games with one another. And this really was one of the very best visits. And it started because I asked him, what would you like? He's 24. I don't know what he would want the way I did when he was five. And so we just created something wonderful. And I have a feeling it's going to be a new birthday tradition for him. If you consider what you want, and you communicate it with the people it's going to impact, you have a much better chance of actually creating the experiences that nourish you. And I guess the thing that I also want to say is that it's easy to get into a focus where you're setting goals or detailing particular activities. And it may be that for your holiday season, what you actually want to do is just set intentions. For example, you have the intention for it to be peaceful, or you have the intention for everyone to fluidly move between being together and interacting in smaller groups and some time alone. And if that's your intention and you share that with your partner and hear what your partner's intention are is like your partner doesn't need to want the exact same thing, but if you both know it, what you both want and what everyone else involved wants, then you can so much more easily create that together. And I want to emphasize that you don't need to prioritize. You don't need to want the same thing as much as somebody else. You just need to speak what you desire and hear what the others involved desire. And then it'll fairly naturally emerge how you can attend to everyone's intentions together. In fact, I'm coaching an adult mother and an adult daughter on their relationship. And we were talking about intentions. And I gave the example that maybe for the holidays, the daughter's intention is that there are no arguments. And the mother's intention is that everyone helps with cleanup. So she doesn't need to just be like a restaurant for the rest of the family, but it's more collaborative in terms of cooking and cleaning up after meals. Those are two intentions which have very different content, but they can easily both be met. Each person's desires can easily both be honored, but if they're not spoken, the chances of them happening are just a lot lower than if they are actually spoken. So, this really is the biggest key to creating a wonderful holiday experience. 
to get clear on what matters to you, to invite the other people involved in creating the holiday with you, to do the same and to share with one another. And with that intentionality and putting attention on the feelings people want to experience and the activities that will contribute to them, you're going to create something delicious and magical. And I fully expect there to be some surprises. One of the women in my holiday coaching program, she and her husband very intentionally don't have children. Um, they always went to other family members who had kids and families. And as a result of doing this exercise together, they got very clear that actually they wanted to just spend the day together and they wanted to volunteer at a cause that was meaningful for them for part of the day. And they had never actually done this before, but they did this as a result of going through this process that I've been describing. And afterwards, she was just glowing. The whole holiday felt like them, so that instead of stepping away from their beautiful married life to participate in all the frenetic energy of other people's busy families, they had a holiday which was so meaningful for them for the first time. Another woman who had a bunch of kids, she went through this process and it turned out they all wanted to go ice skating, which is not even something that they ever did at the holidays. And there were all these other activities that they just eliminated because nobody actually wanted to do it. They just did it because they always had. So if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, this is not the first time that you've heard me say the most important thing is to identify what you want and communicate it well so that you have an opportunity to actually create it. And I'm saying that exact same principle applies when it comes to having a really magnificent holiday season. There's a lot that I covered in the course. I think what I've already said is the most important element and then there's just one more thing that I want to say, which is that the art of reflection is also so important. So make a point on your own or with your spouse or with the whole family, whoever has been involved in creating the holiday experience, whoever set intentions, whoever shared their desires, after the holiday is over, Take some time to notice what did you love? What worked beautifully? What really nourished your heart? What had you feel close with one another? And if there's anything that you did that actually wasn't aligned, that felt disruptive or distracting or disconnecting, then make a note and then make a point of putting in your calendar in October, November of 2023 to review your notes before you go through the process again to enliven and enhance the holidays in 2023. So with this, I wish you a beautiful time preparing as well as a beautiful time enjoying the upcoming holidays. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend and please leave a rating and a review. And if you're ready to deepen your relationship and create a truly intimate, delicious and vibrant marriage, Head over to the Work With Me page at alexandrastockwell.com and choose the program that's right for you.